HCW's Bumping Chops, where the chops hurt and the words mean nothing. I'm your host, co-owner of Heartland Championship Wrestling, Billy Simmons, and this is my longtime buddy, Bobby Casey. Yes, I have two first names, ladies and gentlemen. Bobby Casey. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Bumping Chops. It's actually episode nine. Ooh. Episode nine of Bumping Chops. I didn't think we'd even be at four by now, but that's just, really? I thought you were just going to be too busy, but we've been on you know, a roll. I, I enjoy it. I think we, uh, you know, conversations and putting, you know, just my thoughts and stuff into the wrestling world um, from just a, a boy in Kansas that uh, uh, loves professional wrestling. Well, you do love it. And uh, what I think shows most with this is that it's uh, it's coming from more of like, since you have a terrible memory and you really agreed with that, <laughs> yeah. you can still name off like things that you remember as a kid. So it's not the long term effect; it's the chair shots affect the uh, short term effect. So, yeah, and you know it's one of those things that uh, uh, when I'm sure if I live to be sixty, seventy, up there a little bit, I'm gonna go, man, I was an idiot when I was younger, uh, and I think that way sometimes now, <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. I absolutely love what i've gotten to do for the last 23 years 20 i haven't even held a job that long so. <laughs> but no this ep, uh this podcast is uh brought to you by the chubby buddy studio so let's not forget that hit that like button the subscribe button leave a comment as you as you are uh, watching along like if we ask questions let us know uh how you feel about it um and uh also don't forget to follow us on socials facebook and to follow all the latest HCW content, it is HCW Live 23 on all social platforms. And guys, guess what? We have officially started live streaming all Heartland Championship Wrestling shows. Catch that on our YouTube, more than likely on our Facebook and every social platform we can get it on. Well, I'll mark that off our talking points. Way to blow it. <laughs> Hey, we're talking about media stuff. Why not talk about it? <clears throat> but no, today we have a pretty awesome episode. Like, I didn't expect it to happen so soon. Like, But I also didn't realize how far away we were from November 16th. We're, 17th. We're, Wait, 16th. We're like three to four weeks. Three weeks? Right. But I was, I, like, when I hear October, I don't even think November. Like, that's, <laughs> like... Halloween hasn't hit yet, so right. you're... And my okay. wife's already thinking about putting up the Christmas tree, so that's what's pissing me off. Like, I hate that. I mean, I'm surprised it's not up. When I walked in today, I felt like it would be there. I might have to mention that to her. She usually puts it up the weekend of Halloween, and that's... So this is be, this would be it. So who puts it up first? Heather? Heather says she's not putting it up until after Halloween. What? I talked to her on the phone with, oh, uh, with your mom. Oh, so. okay. All right. So I guess this year... Jamie's got her beat. Jamie's got her beat. Hmm. But no, we are going to uh, highlight uh, several things today. We are going to highlight uh, what happened over the past weekend with HCW in Leavenworth, Kansas. Leavenworth, Kansas. Uh, we are also going to talk about some hot topics that uh, has came up in the wrestling world, whether it be uh, uh, in the big shows or even in the independent world. And today we have a, uh, can we call him a big guest? Or is he just... I mean... He is a very, very big guest. A big guest with, with, uh, it, it, I, I would have messed that up. We should have switched it up. Hit, a hard hitting guest. How's that? That's a great line. A hard hitting guest. A hard hitting guest. But none of Maybe a big, hard hitting HCW champion guest. Well, I guess maybe you should do the interview. You want to do that? Or you want to do the, the intro? Why would I do that? That is your specialty. Well, you just made it sound like The Rock right there. <laughs> Standing at six feet, three inches tall, weighing 330 pounds, wrestling out of Derby, Kansas. He is your HCW Heartland champion, the prodigy, Aaron Helms. What's up, guys? 
Hey, how are you doing are today? You? Did you did you want my mic so you can redo that? Well, you know, I I have to redo the <laughs> intro after I heard you stumbling over your words there. <laughs> yes, I am the hardest hitting heavyweight champion Kansas has ever seen. The man, the myth, the legend, the prodigy, Aaron Helms, and I am Heartland heavyweight champion now for six months. And come November sixteenth, when I climb six feet. 16 feet tall up in the air in that steel cage, drop the elbow down onto Ray Leon and crush him like the bug that he is. You're going to know why they call me the best of the best, Mr. Red, White, and better than you. How are you doing, boys? What's up, Aaron? What a, what a promo. Like, I got a question, buddy. Are you really going to climb that 16 foot high steel cage? Man, I've been working on my, you know, my climbing abilities. It's uh, I'm okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys in on a little insider information here. All right, I'm listening. I am terrified of heights. Oh shit! <laughs> so, uh, you know, when when I heard you announced that we were gonna be in the si- inside the steel cage, uh, well. There's some prep work that goes into that, you know, like you've got to really mentally prepare for the steel cage. And so I've watched some great steel cage and how to sell matches throughout the history of professional wrestling to prepare myself mentally for where I need to be to beat up on Drake Gallows and Ray Leon. And when you really take into consideration that it's a triple threat steel cage match, there's a whole different dynamic than that in that than a one-on-one that I've got to prepare for. So, uh, yeah, you know, if the opportunity comes and I get to drop an elbow on that bug, Ray Leon, uh, <laughs> you never know. I might be climbing that steel cage. Whatever it takes for me to hold up <sighs> this beautiful mm. Heartland mm. heavyweight title. That is a pretty title, champ. That is a pretty title. No, that's a lot clarify. prettier it's sitting on my shoulder, right? too. <laughs> What's that? Have we clarified that it's not he- Is it the heavyweight or is it just the Heartland title? It is the Heartland championship. Okay. Like, we really don't put Have weight, weight classes, classes on okay. anything, but traditionally. And, I to make me, sure. and me and Aaron, especially Aaron Helms, is a super traditional guy. And uh, it. For all the traditional sakes, it's always it was called a, a heavyweight championship, and I think that's why he uses that now. I've always well, tried to not. As long as it's sitting like on my shoulder, it's a heavyweight championship. <laughs> I got okay. you. All right, well said. Well said. My bad. And hey, so uh, you... it's going to be a heavyweight championship for a long damn time. Aaron, I got a question for you. Do you feel like the uh, cards are stacked against you in that steel cage? You know, I think that. Um, being in a triple threat presents a lot of interesting challenges and dynamics. Um, but where a lot of other guys may run from that opportunity, I enjoy that. You're locking two talented, hungry guys in the ring with the hardest hitting guy Kansas has ever had to see. And so for me, it's an opportunity to prove that I am what I say I am and prove what I've been doing all along. And so uh, while I understand it, you know, obviously it cuts my chances of success down a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm a betting man, but I'm going to bet on myself. I think the Vegas odds would be heavily in the prodigy and Helms favor. You know, uh, we was talking about this a couple shows ago, I think. And, uh, you know, I said the same thing, like, uh, Ray Leon is super young and hungry, but does he have the experience to overcome Drake Gallows is no stranger to that cage, and he very, very much wants to be Heartland champion. Um, so the the cards are big, but I'm I still think Aaron the Prodigy Helms walks out champion. But, uh, and you, you know, you talk about Drake not being a stranger to it, but rewind back 2018. Aaron Helms was in the side of the steel cage, mind you. I was the very first steel cage that wasn't a WWE event in Kansas history in over 20 years. First guy facts. to do it. And you know what? I would I walked out of there successful until some shenanigans with a uh, opportunity that cost me at the end. But the end, the end of the day is like I was successful in that match. I just wasn't successful afterwards with the the opportunity that was bestowed upon the number one contender. But you know, with this particular steel cage match, I don't have to worry about that X factor. So now I've got my eyes on the prize. I've got Drake Gallows, a guy I've known for 15 years. You know, 
inside the steel cage with me, and I know how hungry Drake is, and I know how hungry Ray is. And I asked Ray Leon, you know, months ago, I asked him, do you have what it takes? Do you have what it takes? Do you have that factor to push yourself to the level of violence and the level of meanness and that level of intensity that you have to have to be Heartland champion? I don't think he's got it. I don't. I don't. Ray, Ray, you know what? Ray can be the best guy in the world. And I love that all these fans are like, yay, Ray Leon. But at the end of the day, he doesn't have killer instinct. And the prodigy Aaron Holmes does. And really, this matchup comes down to Drake Gallows versus Aaron Helms. Friend versus friend, many, many, many moons in the making. And while a lot of people seem to think Drake Gallows is this super great, talented individual, Aaron Helms is and always has been a bruiser and a guy who is going to break you. And Drake Gallows, if you're listening to this, I love you, buddy. I never have wanted to hurt you, but I'm going to end you when it comes to my Heartland title. Like, there's no love lost when it comes to us between us inside that steel cage. So we know that you're not afraid of violence. We seen what you did to supposedly one of your best friends in Remington war roar to become that heartland champion. Um, and we see that where you excel and exceed um, as far as just the level and intensity and the things you're willing to do to hang on to that title. Um, so I feel like this, this November will be no different. And I, I think, you know, that's what it all comes down to it. There's that killer instinct aspect of it. And you look at the all time greats, right? You look at guys like Ric Flair, you look at guys like triple H, you look at guys like, um, you know, Kurt Angle and what do they all have? They had an undeniable intensity. Guys that were willing to go the extra mile to get what they need out of their situation that they're put in. And there's many talented guys around them that probably should have beat them, but never did. And that's what I hope to be for the Kansas wrestling scene. I am uh, going to show that that level of intensity and that level of physicality um, is what's dominant. You can do all the nice wrestling maneuvers and your flips and your kicks and your all your tricks but when it comes down to it when i punch you in the face there's no flip that's gonna get you out of that situation especially when you're locked inside that steel cage with me well said champ well said well i got a question do you think uh with ray not being with uh the empire any longer do you think that that's made him a stronger opponent or do you think it's made him a little bit weaker since he's uh gotten the fans uh on his back you know, I think, here's what I think. I think that when you start caring so much about what the audience thinks of you, you lose focus on what you think of you. And so for a guy like Ray Leon, who was very successful when he had the Empire, and look at them, they're still wildly successful without Ray Leon. Ray thought that he was the thing making the Empire successful, and that's just not the case. It, they need, he needed them, they didn't need him. That's what it looks like in my opinion. Um, and so when you start looking at, do I care about what the audience thinks? Do I care about what, you know, little Timmy in the second road row cares about what I'm doing? I don't. And so if he's going to stop and delay himself over an action in the ring to think about what some kid in the audience thinks or how the, he may be perceived, that's a tactical advantage for me because I don't have any qualms with what I'm going to do. Some people may call it cheating. I call it creative winning. I'm going to get the job done however I need to. Um, and, you know, so for a guy like Ray to sit there and care about what the audience thinks, I think that holds you back from having that killer instinct I'm talking about. Um Aaron, I think that uh, there's there's the the amount of fighting champion that you've been, you know, love you or hate you. I understand that uh, you don't care what the crowd thinks, but uh, there is some people that uh, like your aggression, like your ruthlessness, and are a hundred percent supporters of Aaron the Prodigy Helms. Well, and I think you know what it comes down to is. You look at throughout the history of humanity, right? There has always been a group of people that love violence. There's always been a group of people that love fighting. And there's always been a group of people that love that 
physicality. And that's why throughout sports history, we love seeing big heavyweight matchups. You know, your Tyson fights, your, you know, your, your George Foreman's and those kind of guys, you know, we love to see that stuff, you know, on the MMA scene. We like to see like, you know, um, your Frank Mears and your Brock Lesnar type fights. And when it comes to the Kansas wrestling scene, people like to see the prodigy Aaron Holmes. They may not like me. And you know what? In fact, kiss my ass if you don't. I don't care. I really don't. In fact, if you're watching this and you don't like the prodigy Aaron Holmes, buy one of my t-shirts. I'll sign it so you can kiss my ass, okay? You can do whatever you want with it. I don't care. But you know what? At the end of the day, you're still paying a ticket to watch me beat up your favorite superstar because you know it's going to happen. It's an inevitability. That's what the fact is. When you step in the ring with me, I am inevitable. I am going to hurt you. And that physicality is something that attracts people. It's like a car wreck. And, I, you know, um, so I think, yeah, for the people that do cheer me, I appreciate it. You know, I'm glad that there's someone there to appreciate that physical aspect. And if you don't like me, great. Go kiss my ass. <laughs> you listen, those, those same people that you're telling to kiss your ass pay your bill. Well, at the end of the day, you know what? They're going to be there either way because they want to see somebody try and knock me out of this championship title and try and take that away from me. But guess what? Little Timmy, you can keep on wishing. But if wishes were fishes, the world would be an ocean. And I tell you what, I'm in a landlocked state, baby. I ain't going nowhere. Man. Well, uh, I guess outside of that, what is your ultimate, like, how do you feel it's going to like happen like phase by phase without giving away any of your uh i guess strategies or anything like that like how do you think it's going to go down for fans that are listening and end up watching i'll tell you exactly how it's going to go down i mean at the end of the day i'm going to hit either ray leone or drake gallows with that clothesline from helms i'm going to let them lay them down on their back and I'm going to pin him one, two, three, dead center in that ring. Because, you know, while a lot of people may want to try and escape the cage and a lot of people are going to try and, um, you know, get out that way, I don't want to do that. I want to I want to put a pinpoint in this. For the last couple months, since I beat, you know, Remington Roar, and a lot of people, a lot of damn people, in fact, I think even maybe you guys tried to say that that was some kind of fluke or maybe Remington was on his bad day. You know what? A lot of people have doubted me and what I bring to the table. And so I've now I've had Matt Stockdale out here chasing after me. I've had freaking, uh, you know, Bennett James, who I just had to put down in Leavenworth, like the dog that he is. And now I'm having to sit here and deal with Drake Gallows and Ray Leone. And I've beat the both of them. I've beat the both of them. And you know what? People could say, oh, well, somebody got hit with a chair. I didn't hit him with a chair. I didn't hit him with a chair. Just because I'm smart enough to duck when I see foreign objects coming, that's not my fault. But I beat the piss out of him. When it came to, you know, Cannibal Matthews, that 350-pound SOB, beat him up too. Guess what? Pandem one, two, three. It all ends up being that the prodigy Aaron Helms walks away the victor. And so you ask me, how do I see it going down? Well, I see somebody on their back taking a clothesline going, oh, damn, that hurt, and getting a one, two, three from me. And I'm going to have my hand raised by whatever referee they try to assign to my match. Hopefully it's someone that actually knows what they're doing because some of these referees want to try and grab my belt and you don't touch my damn belt. I'll smack the piss out of you. But you know what? The only reason I don't is because HCW and the powers that be would find me if I did. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'm walking out with that title. And not you, not Billy Simmons, not Mr. Dick Richards, not a damn person in that locker room is going to stop me. To understand him? Well, I assure you that I did not doubt you. But I will ask this to, to move on into the episode, and we'll uh, have fun with you on here. But uh, chapter one was you versus Remington. Chapter two is, I guess, you versus Drake and Ray. Where do you see chapter three going? No, um... I, I want to be a fighting champion. That's always been my thing. Like I, I think that if you're going to be a champion, you've got to put the brand on your back. And so um, I think there's a lot of really talented young individuals in our locker room who deserve opportunities. And um, 
you know, there's guys that, you know, should be looking at that title scene. Guys like Dutch McLean, guys like, you know, Chance Kerrigan, who was rocking it out as our independence champion. I would absolutely love to get to lock up with Chance Kerrigan because I think he's one of the most talented individuals in Kansas wrestling anywhere. Um, I would love to get a chance with, you know, Tommy Too Good or any of the boys from ACFC or a lot of our tag guys. I mean, there's a lot of our tag guys that are, are really talented dudes. And tag teams as a great team, but also individually are really talented. Um, and then, you know, the Bears Den, if you, which, by the way, for anyone watching, if you want to ever become a professional wrestler, Bears Den training in Hutchison, Kansas, three times a week. It's turning out some of the best students the state's ever seen. I mean, not just right now, but in the history of Kansas wrestling. And so there's some talented cats coming through there that there's this big, big, big SOB that's coming through <laughs> there right now. And you know what? I hope that he gets an opportunity and he can climb his way up to get an opportunity with me because there's some guys that really deserve it. And then, you know, if Blade wants to come crawling out of the woodwork, I'll put him back in retirement. If there's freaking <laughs> Flex Reed wants to come across from Larned, I'll put him back in retirement. You know, it doesn't matter who wants to come out of the woodwork. I'll beat the piss out of him. Good Lord. So you brought up Chance Kerrigan. Okay. Chance Kerrigan is undefeated in Heartland Championship Wrestling. So you're wanting an opportunity with him. Open challenge. Would you do title versus title if you retain in November? Well, um... It would have to be for the right money, I think. Okay. You know, there's got to be there's got to be something there. The contracts would have to be signed up. But yeah, I would do I would do title versus title. I don't see why not. I mean, you want to prove that you're the one of the best of the best. Chance Kerrigan has proven that with his open challenges. Um, he's shown time and time again that he's a very talented guy. But and here's the big but: Chance Kerrigan gets by a lot of those title matches by the skin of his teeth. That's true. I put a pretty more definitive t finish and touch on my matches. And so you give Chance Kerrigan an opportunity with Aaron Helms. Let's see how he handles a true heavyweight, you know. Um, when it comes down to it, there's there's other guys, though, that I think, you know, some big heavyweights that I want to beat up on. Um, Ricky Wingrave, you know, he's out there. I'd like to knock him down a peg or two. Matt Stockdale, six foot eight, nothing between his ears. Big, big old dumb guy. SOB. <laughs> I'll knock him back down another Why is time he or dumb? two. Dude, that Goodness boy eats. Eric, that boy eats crowns. <laughs> oh, rude! Just talking rude. about. Oh, he's the the hard eleven worth. What about, oh. what about your tag partner? And Eddie Rydell. I love Eddie Rydell. He's big. He's mean. He's American bulldozer. But Eddie Rydell is always known as place. Okay, and uh, he is the lieutenant. To my commander, okay? So, and, Eddie Rydell and, wants to step up and get himself in a world of hurt. He can come on with it. I mean, that's your partner, and he stood right by your side even through all the shenanigans. The first time we seen Eddie Rydell in Heartland, that crowd went nuts. They absolutely loved him. The meat man. Hey, absolutely. I all, love, I love Eddie Rydell. And then all Rydell. of a sudden, Aaron, Aaron Helms turns him back to uh, being this big bully. Well, I love Eddie Rydell, and, you know, I think that, um, you know, getting an opportunity to tag team with him again as the American way was was a special moment for me last show um, that we were there in Wichita. But, you know, just like uh, if you go back in the great annals of history, uh, you go back and you look at like a Dave Batista versus a Triple H, Triple H had to put down the animal. Well, Eddie Rydell tries to come up, I'm going to have to put him down. Man, so so nobody's safe. Old if anyone safe. steps up, they, it, it's Hell all no. out war. Bobby gives me the wrong whip. I'll knock him out too. Well, that's my ring announcer now. Come on now. I know. I don't know, you know what? strip you of that title. <laughs> so that's about the only way you're going to get it off of me. All right, my bad. Just don't hit my <laughs> announcer. You didn't do nothing. But, you know, I, I mean, I think there is a lot of talented guys, and the locker room is constantly expanding and, and getting bigger and better. There's one dude that really impressed me here recently that was just on one of our Wichita shows that I think is a, a real mean, murderous SOB, and that's Colt Kilbane. I'd love Ooh. to have an opportunity to wrestle with him. Yeah. And, uh, 
Murder Inc. or whatever they're calling themselves nowadays with his little tag team, but I'll, I'll knock the piss out of him too. Deadly Waters. <laughs> Deadly Waters. Okay, what did you, you know. say? Murder what? Murder Inc. Oh. Actually, Murder Inc. was a very good tag team I with was, Colt Cobain. I thought Kilbane. he said some, another word after murder. Uh, murder Lake is what I thought oh. he said. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, that's where I'll put him as like, in the lake bad, when I'm done damn. knocking him out and putting that's his a bad body tag away. Team champion name though murder lake so aaron you just don't care who it is you want the biggest and baddest you want them to step up so you can knock them down that's what you step saying? up and let me knock them down yes exactly right, I, got you. I want i want there to be no doubt when it comes to heavyweight you know heavyweights in the area that aaron helms is the heavyweight gotcha. and you know what I, hell put it together put a tournament together i'll knock them all down we can do it because i am always have been a big fan of heavyweight wrestling um and there's a different style with bigger guys that are like myself than you get with your cruisers and all that and i don't think it's appreciated enough and i think there's some really talented guys in the area that could do it but then you know you get me in with some of those smaller light heavy guys the cruiser guys the guys that move a million miles an hour and there's a nice stylistic difference there too that i'll enjoy so it doesn't matter who it is i'm gonna hurt them and i'm gonna Sounds- hurt them good <laughs> well, I have not ever seen a cage match in an independent uh, promotion ever, so this is going to be awesome. Uh, and for ones who are listening, uh, that show is November 16th or 17th? November 16th. It's Saturday, Saturday November, 16th. November 16th. Okay. Yep. And it's uh, HGW's first ever cage match, but it is not your first cage match. And I, I, I had a question about one of the stipulations. When they okay. are trying to go out, yep. do they have to have both feet on the ground or do they have to have both feet over the cage? No, they have to have both feet on the ground. Okay. I just want to make sure that. So they got to excel or go over the top and down the backside, um, or out the cage door, or a three count. Gotcha. Just yeah. making sure. Or or submission would be the other or submission, one. But, yeah. Or submission. But it is going to be a. Uh, it's it's going to be a barn burner for sure, especially and. And I, I might be biased. I think that uh, Drake Gallows has this uh, hankering for wanting to also hurt uh, uh, Ray, but uh, I don't think that you're going to be able to. Uh, well, the, I mean, do you be blame him? In your way. Do no, you blame, I don't blame him? him? No, because Drake Gallows, me and Drake Gallows were taking it to the limit. We had a hell of a main event, and Ray Leon comes out and puts his nose in business where it doesn't belong, and Ray Leon comes out because he's mad at me about some perceived slight he thinks he can swing a chair at me and he ends up costing drake gallows his heavyweight title opportunity now is that fair no it's not is but hell the crowd loved ray oh my god he almost hit helms (laughs) they didn't they didn't turn on ray for doing that no they made drake the bad guy for that they made me the bad guy for that we were just minding our business doing our thing and now when ray leon had his opportunity drake gallows returned the favor and do I blame him? Not a bit. Not a bit. Drake Ellis, you earned that chair shot. I hope you savored every moment of that chair shot. And I hope you bleed that kid in the cage because at the end of the day, Ray Leon, man, he he didn't earn it. He didn't earn it. Now, I know what Billy's going to say. Well, Aaron, didn't he pin you in the tag match? Uh, yeah, okay. Technicalities. But a tag match is you prepare for it very different and you prepare for something where it's individual. And yes, Ray Leon may have pinned me. But that's only because we were a little rusty. And me and the American Way, me and Eddie Rydell, hadn't tagged in almost two years. So it had been a minute. Okay, I wasn't used to the complications of tag team wrestling in that particular moment. And so, yes, that's why the title wasn't on the line. That doesn't mean I think Ray should be in this matchup. But... No, alas, here we are, and so November 16th, I'm going to have to just beat the piss out of him and prove it once and for all. But the cage match is an exciting thing, and it is the cream of the crop. But that's not the only big matchup we have on that card, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to this right now, we have a four-way tag team ladder match, I believe. We have some other big matches on that card that I'm aware of, or think is somewhere on the rumor board from what I'm hearing. Mindy Grace will um, have her opportunity for the Heartland Champion Sunflower title. Um, uh, And uh, if I'm correct, I think Dick Richards has brought in 
Noel Summit for that match. Okay, I was going to say, when I was talking to Dick Richards, he was saying that there was going to be some other big title matches. Yeah. I figured it was for the tags, but hell, Noel Summit and Mandy Grace, that's a big matchup right there. That is. Uh, you know, and uh, Noel's, we talked about Halloween and stuff, Noel was fitting right in this time of year. That is that is facts, and she's uh, taken Mindy to her limit before, so uh, um, we'll see what happens uh, on the 16th. And uh, we know for sure that uh, the tag titles will be on the line. We're not sure in what style of uh, type of match. I do know that ACFC is biting hard to go one-on-one with them. Uh, Dick Richards has given me some kickbacks, saying there's some other teams that should be involved also. Uh, so, uh, maybe I like your ideal helms. Maybe I throw a ladder up and then stick all four of them in that dang thing. Well, you know, we'll see where, see where the show goes, but that's going to be a massive show for us. I mean, you talk about, um, you know, what five for the hungry did for us last year coming off of some of our beginning shows in September and everything. It really helped us establish that foothold in, in Wichita and, and, you know, to the Wichita fans, thank you for the continued support with coming out, whether I like you or not, you know, (laughs) independent wrestling in Kansas needs you guys to be there. And, and you've shown out as a city and really, uh, you know, helped us grow. So I appreciate that at least, you know, I I may not have a lot of love for you, but I'll have some appreciation for you. But, you know, I love y'all when it comes to what's going to happen on that card. I mean, there's there's a lot of X factors. There's a lot of things that got to come together. And I think that we're we're on the precipice of a lot of contracts getting signed for that, where it's like, hey, man, we're going to have some big announcements coming out as long as from what I've heard from Dick Richards. Now, we'll see. So so let's kind of segue away from that a little bit uh, um, and go to. Uh, this weekend. So this weekend at Emerald City Tattoo Convention at Century 2, we go on both Saturday and Sunday. Huge opportunity for us as a company and another opportunity for you to meet new fans and stuff like that. With those new fans coming in, are you going to give them the same Aaron Helms? Or are you going to try to be a little more gentler, kinder? Well, you know, um, I think what got me to the big dance is not changing for anyone. So, tattoo convention or not, I'm not going to be any different from who I am. And if they don't like a loudmouth, redneck, ass-kicking SOB, well, they're probably not going to like me. But you know what? At the end of the day, um, I think that uh, we might have a little bit more rowdy people that come into a tattoo convention and get to kind of know me. And um, I'm excited to put the HCW brand on my shoulders and get to walk around with this title and show off what we mean, what we mean to the city and what we can mean to the community and, and some of the cool things that that comes along with being champion. For sure. And, and I just want to say like, you know, fans are not the, uh, whether you like them or not, you've represented HCW well. Uh, you go out, you do some of the things you're, you're in the limelight and, and you're always you. And, uh, for that, I just say, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, you know, I think that, um, one of the things that really differentiates like independent wrestling and what we do, um, versus, you know, the travel and carnival show that is AEW or the WWE is that we do connect on a, on a local level and we do try and impact things, um, you know, hear as much as we can and give back as much as we can. And that's something that, you know, um, where I'm at, I like my opponents and stuff in the ring, you know, that I've gone over that. But there, there's a lot that we do that we get to give back with that gives me a lot of personal reward um, and satisfaction with professional wrestling. I mean, you know, last year we did a toy drive. We got to give away hundreds of toys um to families in need we did a food drive last year um and i think we're gonna do that same thing this year i'm not 100 percent sure but i know for sure the toy drive we're gonna we're planning on working we're working with um salvation army correct uh, which is awesome i mean phenomenal (laughs) organization you know gives so much to the communities and um just being able to give back that little bit um 
is is a big part of the brand of HCW and really the heart and soul of independent wrestling, especially our our particular organization. For sure, for sure. And yeah, and I think so. I think we're gonna do probably do a can drive on the sixteenth uh, because it's right before Thanksgiving, and then of course we have the uh, um, huge show in. Uh, we have a huge show uh, with the Salvation Army in December just to give back for to a to an organization that uh, I know personally um, got us through some rough times. So to be able to give back to something like that, to that Wichita um, community, to uh, the Salvation Army is is a fantastic. Day. Oh, hell, you know what? If we're if we're talking about it, we'll just uh, let's just announce it then. I'll well, I'll put it together here. We'll do it this way. If you bring five canned food items to the show on November 16th, I will give you a signed Aaron Helms 8x10 completely mm. for free. Cause, wow. Yeah. So you, bring the, you bring it to me, um, you know, have them write your name down or something at the front desk or come see me uh, or have them, you know, we'll, we'll figure out the logistics of that. But you bring five canned food items, I'm going to get you a signed Aaron Helms 8x10 for free. So what if we, what if we do this, champ? Uh, what if I I try to match you on some of that stuff? Why don't we uh, sit down, put together some stuff, so we know for sure they're going to get the eight by ten Aaron Helms thing. Uh, well, yeah, well, surprise last, I, I think I got about sixty of them. So now nah, I'll get, put like, you some more. So we'll uh, we'll get get some of that going. Um, but you know, um, let's we'll figure out some stuff but uh, i like that let's do a canned food drive for november 16th That's awesome. uh with that and uh we'll put together something you know for y'all bringing those canned goods in and uh help you have support a salvation this community. army trough for people to jump in uh, i don't know about that <laughs> no i don't know about that let's say the that. that'd be dope uh, but no all both of these shows that are coming up are going to be exciting one i mean it's gonna this is going to air after that happens so we'll be able to talk about that more after the fact but it is going to be exciting especially being able to put something different in front of people's eyes that have either never seen what independent wrestling is about also i think that's your biggest thing right. is that you're going to be able to attract people and let them find out of something that they might be interested in later down the road right and we do we we try to promote our tail off and you know, we put flyers out constantly, stuff like that. But this opportunity gives us another opportunity for fans that may have never even known there was professional wrestling in Wichita to find out about it. And that's all we can ask is opportunities to keep trying to grow and get better. And uh, that's what we're doing, putting ourselves in positions to help grow with the community. It's going to be fun. But, hey, Aaron, normally we, we normally start every episode off with uh, Today in Wrestling History. No. Ready for a little bit of history? I don't know if you, uh, I mean, this is before, no, this is in before my time, unfortunately, this time. <laughs> but in uh, on October 28th of 2000, Brett the Hitman Hart officially announces his retiring from wrestling. He was fired via FedEx by WCW due to their inactivity clause in the wrestler's contract. On his official website, Hart had said the following, and uh, I'll post that in the comments, but like it's a whole long spiel about why he... And I think this is the, honestly the first time I remember hearing about the concussion issues in athletes. Like the, I think... I, I'm not going to give him all credit, but I also think that this also kind of brought eye to some of that stuff that was going on, like with concussions. Because I think, it, wasn't it him and Goldberg? The match between him and Goldberg that he claimed he got a concussion? It was, it was oh. a while ago. Yeah, I mean the Goldberg thing happened, yes. Um yeah. and that's that's famously what gave him a concussion. But it was that they at the time they didn't let him rest after the concussion and he wrestled like six more weeks back to back yeah. to back and it compounded. So it was an ongoing thing. But yeah, I mean that's the, the start of that issue was that, that match. Um that's crazy that Bret Hart retired all those years ago, you know, on on this date. And, you know, you talk about like truly an icon in the industry little kid me man when i was getting into professional wrestling um you know show my age a little bit here we had uh vhs when i was a little kid and so like we would have the vhs of the 60 minutes Shawn michaels bret hart match and we watched that probably a hundred times i think <laughs> i mean seriously me and and Remington Roar and some of our friends, we watched that, and that was like one of the matches that really made us want to do wrestling. Um, nice. Now, 
as we got older, our taste grew, and there's other things that really stuck out to me. But you look at my style of physical wrestling, there's not a, a more physical wrestler than Bret Hart. I mean, everything he did was physical, it's tight, it's snug, and, I mean, truly, the best there is, the best there was, and the best there's ever going to be. I mean, what a what a talent. You know, I didn't I didn't know it was that long ago that Brett retired. You know, he was he was up there. Uh, he, yeah, my best friend, he was Brett Hart was his favorite wrestler. So I'd talk a lot of crap on him because I was a huge Sting fan. They both did the uh, Scorpion Deathlock uh, or Brett Hart Sharpshooter. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, fantastic worker. Like you know, he. He he did a lot of stuff, I think, for the smaller-sized wrestler. Um, just kind of helping put them, letting or people understanding that you ain't got to be 6'7", 360 to uh, win a title. Hey, man, I'm mean, boys, I think. Yeah, but, but, you know, Brett wasn't a small guy by any stretch. I mean, the he facts. Was, he, was, he was He was stout. Pretty, yeah, stout boy. Um, but... Yeah, I think Bret but you Hart didn't need to be a bodybuilder like he was kind of going. Like you didn't have to have all right. the muscles in the show. Right? To yeah, absolutely. A, in a world dominated by giants at the time, Bret Hart showed that the technical prowess and the physicality that he brought to the ring was um, just as exciting, and you know, I, I think changed the industry forever. Yeah, so, I don't disagree. Everybody Bret, stopped to watch him wrestle. Yeah, Bret sure. Hart. Bret Hart is definitely one of the best to ever do it. Um, and I am so sad we never got an opportunity to watch Prime Kurt Angle versus Bret Hart Ooh, that would have been and, really in good. a matchup. I mean, if you talk about, like, early 2000s Kurt, if oh, Bret had man. still been in his prime getting an opportunity against Kurt, imagine 60 minutes of those boys just ripping it. That would have been, that would have been really good. I don't disagree. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, Bret... If by any chance you hear this, I hope you're enjoying retirement. We appreciate everything you've done for the business and, uh, you know, keep being you. Yeah, I mean, he has came back and wrestled, I do believe, because I think he's wrestled, like, just some matches here and there. But, like, his, like, you don't, like, you don't have that, that like, before the Attitude Era, you had, like, I mean, I guess you could call it the Bret Hart, like, attitude. His own. Like, he was just this quiet demeanor dude. He wasn't, he didn't come out exciting. That's what I liked about him, because you didn't, you didn't know what to expect. He's business. Quiet. Yeah, All yeah, but I remember I remember Bret Hart coming out with the uh, pink um, plastic shades, pulling them off, setting them yeah. on the buffet and stuff like that. So he he played to that crowd too. Yeah, but, well, I don't I don't remember that. So you <laughs> you do you're much older than I am. I am very much older than you. Well, you I remember, figure... I remember the the shades on the crowd that or yeah. on the kid. Well, that was, I that was I iconic. Coming but... in pink though. The pink shades are pink, like singlet. They're pink. He did pink and black, and he had pink shades. He took yeah, pink shades off. Oh, they they, they were like oh, um, oh, almost looked like pit vipers. Like <laughs> Leather. Oh, the um, what are the what were the shit? Not, uh, crap. What were those called? The ones that uh, Macho Man Randy Savage wore, kind of like that. Well, they were just flat, but yeah. Anyways, Hart did it. It was good. Uh, but I guess right now for current wrestling, what are you guys exciting about? What's coming up? Like we're kind of, everybody that's listening, we're kind of flipping things up to kind of keep more people involved. I think that's the big goal for this. We want everybody to listen to it and uh, kind of comment along. But uh, what are you guys excited for? Like that's coming up in wrestling and like what's in wrestling news? Like for me, like Samantha leaving WWE, I think is pretty Sucks. big. It's a pretty, it's a huge hit for them. Oh, I think that um, you know. My first and foremost, uh, my best wishes to Samantha Irving and everything yeah, she does sure. in the future. Um, I would not be surprised if we see Samantha Irving on ESPN um, very that wouldn't quickly. Surprise me. Um, seeing the her UFC, with, I would love to see her on UFC. Yeah, I, I think we could very much see Samantha Irving with the Monday Night Countdown for football or you know something like that. I think she or UFC would be a, a great fit for her. But um, you know, I think some of the big things with wrestling going on right now um if you didn't go watch that hell in a cell between drew mcintyre and cm punk that is an absolute classic um i think everyone needs to get off the couch right or go to your couch right now flip (laughs) to your favorite streaming service and and watch that because it's it's amazing um i think there's a lot of really man i think there's a lot of really cool stuff getting ready to happen in wrestling um you know i mean we're the holidays are 
happening, but very quickly we're going to be at the Royal Rumble, which is my personal favorite event of the entire year. Um, and so I'm, I'm well, excited about that. We have Survivor Series next. Yeah. Um, and that should be big, especially with the uh, uh, Bloodline uh, storylines going. I think Survivor Series could be a very uh, a cool Survivor Series this year. So I'm, a look, I'm looking forward yeah, to a that. A bit of a civil war going on there. So. Oh, yeah. And then... Uh, I don't know if you've seen, but the Wyatt Six just showed up um, against uh, Authors of Pain uh, hmm. and their group. So I th- bet you they turned that into a Survivor Series match also. That'll be awesome. I mean, the Wyatt Six, I think, are um, an interesting group. I think that's a, um, you know, I think that's a hard thing to continue that image after Bray. Um and the unfortunate passing of Bray Wyatt. But I, I think that's an interesting thing that they've got going on. And, you know, I think a lot of a lot of cool stuff you can turn into there. Um, and then on the AEW side, I mean, I'm, there's a lot of a lot of exciting stuff going on there. Um, I'm a big, big Chris Statlander fan, so Stratlander. Um, so I've been watching some of her stuff here recently. And, um, you know, I, I just want to see some more absolute classics from like Kenny Omega and some of those guys that are over there. So, you know, unfortunately I haven't got to watch a lot of AEW. Just my schedule don't allow me to, uh, like I've got to pick and choose, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I see clips all the time. I watch a lot of uh, little clips on TikTok, stuff like that. So I try to keep up on that end. Uh, I know for one thing, if I could ever land Nick Nemeth in HCW and could afford it, he would be here because that dude is a classic. Well, absolutely. Well, I mean, Billy, you know who's hitting the indies right now is old uh, John Bradshaw Layfield, man. Let's see who's got the real clothesline. Aaron, I don't know if you want to take a clothesline from that man. Oh, man, I'll I'll get a clothesline off with him. We can (laughs) see who can go. (laughs) But Good stuff. But as far as other wrestling stuff... uh, Yeah, uh, and and also uh, for future wrestling... um, uh, Let's not forget that you guys are streaming, so don't forget to follow HCW on YouTube because if you guys are getting, I guess, bored not being able to watch wrestling, HCW puts on one hell of a show, especially at the Osage Rec Center. Loud, the crowd is loud. I bet you it's going to be hard to hear anything in there if, when you have the crowd of Wichita going off on live on YouTube. That You know, that crowd in Wichita being on our live feed is going to be it's gonna fantastic. Show what, it's going to show, I think, what... Uh, Honestly, what HCW is about, like right. yeah, I mean, I agree. so I agree. absolutely, and and there's um yeah so HCW Live twenty three, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, um, TikTok, like we are out there. There's a lot of a lot of really cool stuff. Where Follow you the wrestlers can see our too. Stuff. So, like uh, if you're following HCW's page, check out the wrestlers and. Follow yeah, you their can, TikToks and stuff like that. You can definitely that. find me at at the Prodigy Helms on all social media. Um, and shoot me a message, whatever, and I'll, I'm happy to answer any questions or anything if you guys got them. Uh, but at this, I, I want to take some time, and I kind of want to highlight Logan Knight, okay? Because okay. I read a post about him, and I mean, I've I've talked to Logan Knight. We don't know each other that well, but our runnings are always awesome. Like he's just a he brings a certain level of uh, business to HCW. I think he means business, but he also means he wants to welcome everybody. He's welcoming everybody because he's. I think he was offered that opportunity when he was a young wrestler coming up. Okay, so I think like when you look back at that, like people that aren't, uh, I guess, open to new people tagging along, whether it be in a car ride or to get information from. I think he's a, a great source for that, just to teach new wrestlers like what to do when they're starting out. So Logan's still young in the business. I think what five years maybe. Not even if I don't that. think. Uh, like that's like I said, if that. Um, but he is, he's pushing himself. He's getting out there. He's traveling. He's offering people to jump in the car with them. And a lot of times, like being a trainer, I tell all my kids, any, well, as soon as I release you to start getting in cars, you should be in every car you can. If you can afford to jump in the car, you need to go. If this is what you want to do, if this is the life you want to live, you have to commit to it. And that commitment means finding times to get in a car to go meet another promoter and get an opportunity. This last weekend, Leavenworth. Leavenworth is more of a more relaxed style show for us. A couple kids drove all the way from Oklahoma 
to Leavenworth, which is by Kansas City. So probably, what, six, seven-hour drive for them with no, like, they weren't booked. They weren't, but they showed up to see what we did and if they could get an opportunity. The kids' names were uh, um, mm, Billy the Kid and... uh, uh, Oh, what match were they? I watched. Were they in the uh, tr- uh, the triple? They were in with team? Dan, handgun Dan. Oh, okay. That's where I uh, actually had to cut away. Okay. Okay. So unfortunately, that's the one I had to miss out on. Gotcha. So. But they were with uh, handgun Dan, and uh, uh, it was it was a good match. Uh, they showed up. I gave them an opportunity. They went out and did a good job. So yeah. you never know what can put you know it puts you in eyes of promoters. So jump in a car, get in, ride with. Pay your gas, feed yourself, be responsible, clean up after yourself, and be respectful. The biggest things. And that's why I'm saying that. Like, he always has a post about, hey, I've got an open seat. Like, he's always letting people know, hey, you can come along. Like, yep. I don't think he really necessarily has to ask you who you are, but I think that if you're willing to travel with him, and he's going to be open. But getting into Logan Knight, he had a question on YouTube, and that's where we're going to get into now some questions. Perfect. But uh, Logan was wondering... Uh, and you can tag in on this too, Aaron. Uh, how long have you been wrestling, by the way? I, I guess I, I mean, normally this is a little bit different for us. So, so like- I started wrestling professionally um, April 16th of 2016. Sweet. Well, um, did you go to a lot of like independent like promotions like before that too? Um, I went to a handful of independent shows because I had friends who had been doing it and stuff. But um, you know, like not a ton. I would say like. Um, less than a dozen, but I've I've been to a couple. There's there's some pretty cool independent stuff out there, um, you know that I'd get to be a part of. But when I got when I first got into the business, I'm um, like Billy was talking about, well, you know, getting in the car and going. Man, I was going everywhere for a while, like anywhere I could possibly be at every weekend. I mean, we went like nine months without being home five days at a time <laughs> that was just for work stuff like we were we were gone like it was just there's no holding back we were just go 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 um now my life has changed i've gotten married and some of that stuff so i had to slow a lot of that down but you know i like to still be out on the road where i can and be you know in car loads where i can because i really think that's where the magic of the business is um there's a lot of fun that you can have in the ring there's a lot of really fun that you can have at shows and stuff but a lot of the best times are just with the guys in the car just kind of jaw jacking and telling stories and having fun and and uh doing it all on little to no sleep and billy's driving (laughs) do we want to leave this open for him to uh i guess tell that story about the uh uh, like a 30 minute stay at a hotel is that what it was yeah, so when Is me that and a Billy, good story to start with? oh, you know, one of the one of my I always <laughs> joke about like, um, you know, me and Billy used to travel together quite a bit, and so when we were, um, we had been out Damn at a Cody Rhodes. We had, we had we had well not we had been out at a we had been out at a, a club mm-hmm. of ill repute for one night and until about six in the morning enjoying the festivities of of bare naked ladies and we um, left from that club drove straight down to Amarillo Texas now we had wrestled the night before in Oklahoma City been at a bachelor party after the show been there till six in the morning really closed the bar down shout out drove, sam stackhouse yes drove straight <laughs> drove straight to amarillo texas where we had to wrestle that night and me and billy were like well we don't really want to stay in the car and sleep because you know we're two pretty big guys in a small car at the time so <laughs> but we also don't want to break the bank and get a hotel room or nothing that we're only going to be in for a couple hours so we pull up to the Cockroach Motel, and we we pull up to this. I mean, dude, it was it like was shady. Of, uh, it was like... it was the uh, the epitome of shady hotels. <laughs> you could pay by the hour, and we paid paid for like an hour and a half or two hours worth of sleep time. We walked in. Beds felt like cardboard boxes, like they'd taken refrigerator boxes and put them on the bed. We didn't even get under the covers or nothing. We said, hey, man, put your bag on the bed, lay on the bed. We're going to sleep here for two hours, and we're going to go to the show. And uh, best $32 we ever spent. (laughs) Wow. 
Did they yeah. have any questions? Oh, like, did they man. look at you guys weird when you guys were checking in? Like, no, nah, man. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't even think that we checked out or anything. We just were like, okay, we just we're, left. <laughs> we're out of here. Yeah, we're and done. <laughs> yeah, and then we wrestled that night, and I think we went home. I think we drove and back to Wichita that night. We stopped at the casino, night. didn't we? Well, we did, but I'm saying, like, I think we drove home. Oh, yeah, we did drive home. Um, we straight through. Yeah. But after we'd gotten our paydays and everything in Amarillo <laughs> and, and all that, we were at this gas station at, right right <laughs> south of um, of the Kansas border. There's this <laughs> gas station there, and it's a casino gas station. I was like, well, shit, Billy, let's go in here and let's let's just put 40 bucks on, on some machines. So I go in with... 40 or 60 bucks he goes in with like 20 bucks tell me why we didn't both walk out with hundreds of dollars i walked out with over 700 dollars philly walked out with almost a thousand guess what we did with that money <laughs> we bought brand new tag team titles for <laughs> the company sure the hell did yeah uh, well yeah i love good what times. we want on here good times good times yeah good go times. on go on to some of those you know you get to be on the road and stuff like that and that's where you really make a lot of your friends. I remember there was one time when I was traveling down to Amarillo with Billy, and it was dead winter. I mean, it was cold out, real cold out. It was like 16 degrees or so. <laughs> and Paradox is sitting in the back seat with me, and we're in the back seat, and there's a Billy, and I forget who else is in the front, but me and Paradox are trying to fall asleep, and Bubba Sutton, rest in peace, he was in the back with us. And uh, Billy rolls down all the windows all of a sudden and child locks the windows so you can't roll them up. <laughs> and it's flying down the road at 80 miles an hour. He's in a hoodie and all bundled up, but he's got himself a little blanket. None of them, I'm in t-shirt and shorts because I just got done with my workout when we got in the car. <laughs> and I'm freezing my ass off. It's, it, it was like 16 degrees out. I'm just like... <laughs> playing freeze out for and we did that for like 10 minutes dude i was purple I looked like a big ass grimace when i was done with that oh uh, uh, hell but, <laughs> but no like shit. me getting to that was I, I i wanted to get to uh uh logan knight's question but i i think we always want those stories on here like so uh, yeah, like man, share your them. stories so that way so when, when you like say you're a wrestler for hw or something in there and you come on here make sure you have stuff like that because that's 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 where we get our enjoyment out of this the most. But uh, <laughs> I, I guess you can go back to when you uh, first started professional wrestling and Billy can't also. But uh, Logan wants to know, when was the last time uh, that a world title changed hands in Kansas? So, like, a title that wasn't 30 miles away or 60 miles away and changed hands in Kansas oh. or anything like that. So well. he's, he's talking more independent, um, and we had kind of talked earlier but he was asking a little more on the independent scene, not not necessarily like uh, WWE, AEW, or anything like that. Um, so I think I think we would have to go to the AI, AIWF uh, World Titles. Um, oh, it it was it's been recent because uh, I put it on um, and. The AIWF has titles that are defended all over the country, so I think it would have to go to that one, um, I was gonna if say, I'm not wrong. I mean, I was going to say, I know Central States NWA was still a thing up until, like, 2012-ish, so yeah. um, maybe you'd have an NWA title switch that somewhere could have in been. there. That could have been. But, um, man, I don't know. If you're not talking about, like, a WWE title or something. It was, it's been a while. Now, WWE-wise, I remember, I want to say, Christian beat Randy Orton for the world title in a steel cage here in Wichita in, like, 2011. Oh, uh, nice. But that, or he may have retained. I don't know if he if he was new champ that night. But, yeah, I don't know, man. That's a tough question. That is. We need to probably mm-hmm. get... Uh, a world title holder here. I don't have independent at all, but I also couldn't tell you like the last big title that was you, to change. You know, there's, other than there's some history the guys you got to get involved with that that could really tell you. Guys like uh, Rusty Rex or, or Chris Burnham from Oklahoma. Man, those those like they know like the whole history of the region. They could probably tell you that more than me. Yeah. The true diehards. But no, like, uh, I mean, 
I, ju- I did want to highlight Logan with that, but I also wanted to ask this question. So if you guys have questions like that for the, either anybody that we have on here or Billy, whether it has to pertain to professional wrestling, like becoming a wrestler or something that they've run into, like make sure you leave those in the comments below. And then also shoot them a message on HGW's uh, Facebook page or anything like that or the Chubby Buddy. So just yep. don't don't hesitate to ever ask a question. There's no dumb question, I don't think. I don't think so either. And, I, you know, I just want to give out information and have fun and and, and – you know, tell stories and, and bring professional wrestling, the business that I absolutely love, um, to more limelight and just show you what we all do. And I love telling stories uh, when Aaron Aaron talks about little stuff, just flicks my memory and makes me laugh and smile and because uh, <laughs> we've had a lot of good good times. Yeah. You talk about, you know, submit your comments and all that stuff, Bobby. Um Many moons ago, when I was about maybe 10, like about 12 years old, I was a middle schooler at the time, I really wanted to be a pro wrestler. I was obsessed with it, like that's all I wanted to do. So I emailed every single pro wrestling company in the state of Kansas and Oklahoma and North Texas and Colorado, any of them that I could. I, I searched them all up and I emailed them and I tried to call them and leave voicemails and stuff, tell them, like, I wanted to come train and all that. And there was a group, um, Metro Pro Wrestling, out of Kansas City, who actually, like, indulged me and emailed me back and gave me a bunch of information about it. And then when it finally came down to how old are you, and I was like, well, I'm 12 years old. And they're like, well, <laughs> you probably got to wait a couple years, buddy. <laughs> but um, I told that story to uh friend of mine tommy snow who dealt with a lot of stuff up in that region and he got a big kick out of it because um when before i had known him i was a kid and he had been at an independent show here in wichita and i thought i had met al snow <laughs> but it was tommy snow and I, I and i had no idea and i thought for years i had met al snow i and no it was tommy but. Tommy's the man. Well, this uh, now we're going to get in some hot topics, like some hot seat questions just for I come up with some questions, but I, I always ask other people. That's why I said leave a comment. If you have a question, I will pull from it. That way I don't have to come up with it. That makes my job 100 times easier. So I try <laughs> to come up with these like deep thought questions and uh, try to uh, kind of get them to think on their feet, kind of give these guys information that like something that they might want to hear or maybe do- delve into later down the road. But um, the first one for me is uh, – and you can also input on this. Don't hesitate either, Aaron. So, uh, looking, I guess, in the entire since you are uh, an owner at HCW, looking at the entire show as a concept of like you you're putting this together. What roles outside of the wrestlers play a major factor into the experience that the fans have, and also also the wrestlers? Like, what gets them like what positions or hi- that you want to highlight can help the uh, help a wrestler out the most there's there's a lot so a referee is more important in that ring than most people understand a referee can make or break a very very good match um so referees are super important uh you have to have a good announcer that can project his voice that sounds good that uh, does different stuff, so that that's a good. Like, I don't know if there's any position that we use that isn't important to us. You know, our door lady, fantastic. I have a security team, and they work their tails off. You know, HCW yeah. has her med- our our own medical lady, um, who's been fantastic on little cuts and stuff like that to make sure people are okay. Yeah, so absolutely. there's so many different positions. The video guys are, I mean, we couldn't be going live if it wasn't for our video crew. Yeah. I so think there's that's so much. That's, that's a big thing for me, man. Is like, you know, um, for all the, what pro wrestling is, is so much more than the actual wrestling. It is the pomp and circumstance. It's the theatrics of it. It's the the production of it. You know what I mean? Um, and so, like, all the guys that help set up the lighting and the staging and um, running that live stream stuff and getting live commentary for us um, so we can put that footage out there and have a really nice, cohesive product for our our customers um it it starts 
I always tell people it's kind of like a church, right? It starts from the moment you walk in. You got to have a good door person, right? You want that per- you want to feel greeted when you walk into a church. We want you to feel greeted when you walk into our our show or a Walmart. It would be another example. You got to have that person that greets you right when you walk in. Yeah, we get have your a, we, shit and get out. Yeah, we, we've got, we've got a great person that does that who Very much so. instantly makes you feel welcome. That extends to our concession staff. We've got two ladies running our concessions that make you feel welcome and feel like, hey, man, what do you need? Like, I'm here for you. What can I do for you? That goes to our merchandise ladies and, and gents that run that. You know, um, the production staff, as far as, like, you know, the running all the all the sound and the lighting and the, all that stuff. And then security. I mean, it's it's a team effort. It goes so far beyond the actual wrestling aspect of it that on any given day we have 20 extra people running around that are there for x amount of things we have a seamstress who helps with stuff who's there a lot of times and god there is so much stuff that needs sewn last minute that you don't know about (laughs) and and we've got a girl that does it like we've got people there that are there and it's like and they're not doing it because it's like oh man this is a paying gig that i'm like really like needing the money for it's for the love of the business, man. Like, they're giving a portion of themselves to us. Um, you know, like, my wife does a lot of... She's done 50-50 stuff for us. She's done merchandise for myself. And it's like, I, I thank her so much for that because it's like, that's a, a part of that position that goes beyond what I'm doing in the ring or what we're doing in the ring and is so important to the how the show is actually perceived because customer service is everything. And, and you know, that goes even outside of the actual show, but how people are responding with our social media. We've got a couple of people that help run social media stuff. So when you're getting, if you message our page, you're getting a, a fast time wave response. You're not just being left on red or anything like that. It's because we've got people that handle that. And so it is such a team effort. Um, and I think that, you know, it's just very exciting that people are so bought in and want to be part of it. And like love that they are, People really do care about the brand, and so that's, you know, it's a, it's like a family, like a big family, and we try and give back to those people, too. You know, we, we feed lunch to everyone, we do donuts for breakfast, we do some, you know, dinner stuff, we've got some cool events and stuff we go do as, like, little team builders, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a big, big team effort. There's so many people we couldn't do it without, and our sponsors, a big Very shout out to our sponsors. sponsors. You know, so, like the um, chubby buddies. Oh, oh, thank <laughs> you. I mean, we now now that we have bumping chops, I've cut back on it just to kind of highlight little things for teasers, so to blow everything up on here. That's what I've. I mean, we still promote it and all that stuff, but uh, we try to leave the the big juicy stuff for this. But uh, no, like like also, I guess to add on to that, like, what would you kind of tell somebody? Like, I know that like I've been in an area where I felt like I was in the way. Right. So like if I volunteer for helping something and I don't really know what I'm doing, like I don't want to be in the way for that. So like what would you tell somebody who's anticipating to like message you right now? Hey, I I would like to help, but I don't know anything about it. Like what would you suggest to them, whether it be you or even somebody down the road? Like how can I get into something in this ladder effect of like what a show ends up being? And it's it's really a matter of um, what are they looking at to do? Do we have a need for that? And can I make it work? Uh, you know, there's there's so many people that help out, that volunteer. There's so many people that want to. But to be honest, at times there's not a spot for everybody. You know, yep. there's there's so many different things. And, and people, I get messages a lot. Hey, man, I'd love to help out. I'd love to do something. One of the things that I'm really trying to push for is to try to build a uh, street team for Wichita for ACW. So, you know, give me a good group of people that want to go out and put flyers out for us, and I'll let them into every show for free. Yeah. And and so if Hope you are – if you are listening to this and you want to be part of the HCW street team, uh, message us, hashtag street team, and we'll start – getting some contact info from you guys and everything and we'll put that together and we'll organize some days where we're going out as a big group and really firing like sections of the town at once or or, you know split off into little groups together but yeah the hcw street team is our biggest need right now because like billy's saying you know 
there is a point where um, we can almost have too many people running in and out of the locker room. And so you got to really find that balance of like, hey, man, we need some volunteers to help put the show on. We need, you know, we need help with setup and tear down and all that stuff. And we always need that stuff. But um, we also need a lot of stuff where it's like not necessarily day of, but where you're out hitting up you know your casey's gas stations and your local businesses and and your you know your flyer and the town um we need people that are willing to go do direct marketing and stuff for us and be representatives of the brand so if you're listening to this and you want to be part of the hcw street team message our page and i will i'm putting together some of that i know billy's been putting together some of that um we're definitely going to be organizing some events there cool well that answered my question so <laughs> But uh, our, the last question I have for this before we get into uh, you highlighting what happened at Leavenworth. Um, and Aaron, this is uh, I, I think this is really going to benefit both of you guys. So uh, as someone as both of you guys grew up loving wrestling as kids and then teenagers, adults, and then now becoming professional wrestlers, uh, what has surprised you or what was it that surprised you most getting into the professional wrestling world that made you kind of go, ah, like what was that aha moment or what was it that, Good or bad, what was it that kind of opened your eyes a little bit? It was surprised me is how bad the damn ropes hurt when you hit them. Um, a lot of people say that. Dude, it'll knock the wind out of you. You don't know that until you've hit it wrong, and then it's like, hmm, nah, I'm going to feel that tomorrow. Um, that was one thing that surprised me. Um, I'll tell you, one, th- one thing that always surprises me is that there is so many pro wrestlers, but the community is so small. Like, Everyone knows everyone who knows someone. Like it's it's very much like a extended community thing where like hey, like everyone's kind of connected in this weird way. And so, um while there's thousands of wrestlers all over the US, so like everyone truly does like know each other you in a, you know. or at least know of each other in some way or fashion. Or if you don't know each other, you know you know somebody who knows somebody who knows each other and so it's easy to make those connections um and the world is just a lot smaller than than you would think at first so that's that's one thing that kind of surprised me when i first got into it so you asked uh aha moment or yeah, like something... yeah something that really kind of opened your eyes like something you did know as a watching as a fan right and you're like okay like I want like what like obviously what got you into wanting to go be a professional wrestler? What made you go, hey, I'm gonna go do it? You and Walter that time that you drove down to Amarillo. So it was more of it started way before then, and I think I've talked about it before how you know that was my thing to do with not only my uncle but my dad who worked all the time. Is he loved professional wrestling, and I got to the time we spent together was a lot of watching wrestling, and he took me to my first wrestling show in Amarillo, and. That's where the love sunk in. That's where the, I think it was a week after I went to that show that I told my dad I wanted to do two things. I wanted to either be a professional football player or a professional wrestler. And, uh, you know, I've strived my whole life to try to do that. And I've not been the biggest, you know, I, I, I didn't make it to any big, uh, company. Um, you know, I've done a ton of independent stuff. I train kids now, but that aha moment was, When you go into a spot and be just because of your wrestling and who you are, the the amount of respect and the stuff that you get shown, respect means a lot to me personally. So then wrestling, that it's bigger when it comes to wrestling. Because if you don't have a good amount of respect, you, you're going to be have a hard time in this business. So you show respect and you get respect. And I teach all my kids, these are the way to do things. These are the things you're supposed to do right. You know, I've, I've done countless seminars because I just want to get better. So that way, anytime I train someone, I can help them get better. Because the goal is I might not have made it to the big time, right? But one of my kids might. One of the kids that I trained might. You know, people that I have trained are traveling all over this country wrestling. And that to me is awesome. Now, is there anything bad that you disliked about it? Like once you got in, you're kind of like, Oh, I don't know about this. Either one of you, like where you kind of, Oh man. Oh, car rides. 
<laughs> like, I love the core rides, but God, like, it's one thing that I didn't realize is how stiff, like, the car actually makes you after a wrestling match. Like, you go, you go get in your, you do your thing, like, let's say I wrestle 20 minutes tonight, right? And then I gotta go drive three hours home or whatever. Dude, I will feel worse because of that car ride driving home than I would have because of the match. And it's like, once your adrenaline stops and you're all cramped up in the car ride, like, that, that was a tough adjustment <laughs> is how, how much that part sucks. Um, but that's where I went, you know, if we go back to earlier in the conversation where I said, like, you got to be with the right people, that's what makes it worth it. When you're in that car ride and it's kind of like, man, I don't want to have to drive till four in the morning or I don't want to have to do this and you're with the right people makes it worth it and it makes it so much more fun and tolerable when you start doing that by yourself those are long nights a lot of pains and aches and it gets it gets to be um pretty grueling on you so how much new music did you find out about writing with billy to amarillo and well, i just found out about his deep love of celine dion and um you know, oh, really? <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Really? <laughs> um, you know, dang um, Tommy Snow. <laughs> no, like that was one of my favorite things. Was like, well, one Billy's always been known to have this giant ass book of just CDs. He's, I think he still has the book, don't you? I do. It's still in my house. And <clears throat> like, no matter what was in there, but you're gonna find something in there that you absolutely loved. So Dr. Dre was in that thing every single time. Like a few times, Josh has taken it, and he's like. No, he knew he was like Rain Man with that. Like, <laughs> the Chubby Buddies just had an episode of uh, Raising Rain Man because we talk about Josh's son, but uh, like Rain Man right here 101. When his CD was not in that case, he could tell by picking that thing up if one CD was not in that sucker. <laughs> well, in like today's day and age, we, I don't have to carry CDs. Uh, right. uh, Spotify is fantastic, but my playlist, if you ride with me, it's country, it's rock, it's rap, it's. ICP, it's murder rap, it's I I I like music. Music is right. another form of entertainment. Yeah, for me when we when I rode with Billy a lot, um, like we did listen to a pretty good chunk of music. I mean, there's a lot of variety, and like like he just said, like there's so much. Like we could go from real old school country to you know an ICP song or to freaking <laughs> Tupac in the span of. <laughs> two songs but um you know a lot of that time we would spend like talking ideas and stuff and like pitching ideas from every different direction and then it was okay if this is your idea okay what's the opposite of that what makes that idea suck so then we would go in and we would look at those and we would say like okay these are the good things we really love these are the things that we don't like here and we would just shoot ideas off of each other and always be trying to like mold each other to be better and and think differently and then even when you were thinking about stuff like doing promos and interviews and stuff we would do a game where it's like okay you've got to cut a promo as yourself and then you've got to cut a promo as your opponent <laughs> and then you've got to cut a promo as somebody else who's now been added to the match and <laughs> And just, but do three completely different characters, and that way you're always thinking about new ideas and how to. Um, just... It was like a, a writer's room in your car. Oh, yeah, so. it was like a writer's like, room I, always. I can't tell you how many storylines for XWE came out of me and Aaron on car rides. That now that's a yeah. shoot. But that's the, that's what we wanted. We wanted this to be like this. Like when we talk about this type of stuff, we wanted this to be. I was going to actually tag it uh, hashtag Do the Drive. So yeah. like that was going to be like the segment to kind of go along with like the pictures that Billy used to share on Facebook all the time. Like when he yeah. was, I mean, traveling all the time. Yeah. yeah I mean, and, and man, I, I miss some of that. I really, I miss being in the car and getting to go to like Texas and stuff like that. And I think maybe next year I'm going to try and do some more of that and get down there more often. Um, and get like relicensed in Oklahoma and stuff like that, because I, I do miss a lot of that. Um, and I'm not doing anything on my weekends right now anyway, except for, <laughs> Making you know, money. work at work and all the other stuff. But, um, but that was the thing is it became like such a writer's room. And then it became like a, like a thing where it was like, okay, so we're, we're, this is your idea. This is how we think that could work. But it wasn't just about character stuff. It was about, Hey man, how do we make doing, 
you know, 300 people in the door for tickets? How do we get that to 500? Um, how do we get our merchandise to run 5% better or 10% better? How do we get our concessions to be 15% better? And, like, what makes that experience? And just little things, and then it would be like, uh, like, paradox and talk about like oh man we should do this and then i'd be like well that sucks because we could be doing this and then he'd be like well that sucks and then billy would be like well actually i think we should be doing this and then so <laughs> those conversations and then hearing each other out and then tearing each other's ideas down and then building them back a recording up recording device to like record a podcast on those drives like uh, that's, but that's what that's for like tearing them down no, and then building our ideas back up as a group was a great way for us all to find like really ways to push everything forward and you know with xwe there was there's a lot of things i'm really proud of like when we started taking over that um man that company had like a thousand facebook followers it had little to no money coming in it was when billy took it over it was going to be a dead brand within 10 months and if that six months so it was like probably. the ufc when dana white took it over and by within three years we grew that facebook following from what was like, I think it was 982 people. It was just shy of 1,000. It's now got 7,700 people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've only been with HCW 12 months now, and we're already over 3,500 followers on Facebook and growing. And if you haven't liked and followed our page, you should do so now and also share it. 100% do so. <laughs> and uh, invite all your friends to like it because that's how we continue to grow. But it was those conversations and those opportunities that allowed us to continue to push that. And Really, it's what keeps the passion alive because there's a lot of like ruingness that goes into the business side of wrestling. That like, if you don't have those fun, creative outlets, it's just gonna make it feel more of a chore than a, a passion. That's a fact. And I can't do like you know I I've I've booked for ten years now, uh, at least eight, and uh, all the ideals that have come is not always like there never have been always just me. Like I, I take outside information from everywhere and Aaron w was a very big source of that and still is. Um, so his, well, I remember he's when got we had a smart poker mind. Over here and like all he would, all he was talking about was how bad of a decision you made about hiring somebody for uh, XWE one time. And I was like, <laughs> it was the first time ever meeting Aaron. We had a poker over here at my house. I don't know if you remember it, Aaron, but like that's yep. all he talked. I was like, Man, is this dude going to complain about his decision all night? <laughs> yeah, they, yes, he will. <laughs> Listen, me and Aaron are such good friends. We've had such heated conversations oh, in the him. backstage of areas I've saw it. where people thought, well, <laughs> they're going to fight, and we just got to get our differences out. I he moved. has different opinions. I have different opinions. That's what makes That's us great goes. together. And one of the things that where I have to kind of take that role a little bit is because Billy is super, super nice, sometimes too nice. And he won't tell people no, or not, not that he won't tell people no, he's gotten a lot better about it now. Um, but sometimes it's just like, Hey man, we're up here with the idea. We got to bring it back down to here with the idea. No, that's, that's and, not lies. and reel it in a little bit. There's, so. There, there is no cap there <laughs> and and sometimes he's not with me sometimes it's like hey man i'm gonna do a triple front flip off the cage and he's gonna be like actually no you're not <laughs> like he's gotta reel that in and so some, some of that i think is um you know iron sharpens iron and yeah. um there's a lot of guys in, sure. the, in the wrestling world that have helped sharpen me into a pretty strong blade i think and yeah. I think that um, that's what makes our company great and makes HCW continue to be able to grow. And um, when we go into 2025, man, like there's so much growth that's going to happen, I think, that is so exciting. I mean, you know, um, like really we've, we've, so we've, we've wet on our beak with the first year, you know, we got that under our, our belt. Now it's, we've proven that we can do it. And, um, we've got that consistent base of people that are there for it and want to see us succeed. Now it's time to grow. And, yep. um, I think that's when you check out HCW in 2025, you're going to see the shows getting bigger and bigger. You're going to see a lot of just hard hitting, high flying, hyper exciting action. And, um, I'm, I'm excited. Like hold on to your butts guys. It's going to be a heck of a ride. 
I don't disagree. Now I'm going to circle back around to your question, Bobby. Um, and your question was what again? Give me Which, what, the second one. The last one. Yeah. Uh, it was what was your like the something that surprised you like getting into professional wrestling versus being a fan, not knowing like what could happen like when you got in there. So I think one of the the biggest and or, so you were looking at negative. We gave you our positive. A negative thing uh, is the amount of hey brother, how are you? Da 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 da. And then turning around and we'll go talk crap behind your back. Um, and, and to that point, it, it, it can be annoying. The junior like, high hallway. Yeah, but everybody's trying to get a step up. Like uh, wrestling, as much as it is a group effort, it's an individual effort. So yeah. everybody's looking to get that step. So you got a lot of people who will, you know, oh, this and this, and then turn around, ah, I didn't like that. And then you got some people that will be straight up, hey, man, that was dumb. And uh, so the amount of the, like, people that can look at you in the eye and say one thing and then totally be lying to you drives me nuts sometimes. And that's why you have to pick and choose who you bring in. Yep. Yeah. I, I that tried. was exactly what I was looking for. So yeah. I, I, the drive still matters to you. So. I 100% agree, man. Like, the, the amount of, I don't want to call it fakeness, but. Um, Mother fake. Like, like, the backstabbing portion of that or like the going out of your way to bury somebody like and over stupid stuff too like there there is there's a lot of stuff where i'm like really that's what we're upset about really <laughs> like what hmm. like thanks sir like some of that i'm like hmm, i don't i don't get it um i try to be very straight with people there's people i don't like they know i don't like them um but I may also respect him in the ring, and I'll still push for him to be successful. There's a guy that's very successful in Kansas right now that I'm not personally huge on. Me and him have had our differences. Um, but I've always pushed for him to be successful. And, you know, that's one of the things that I, I do try and take a lot of pride in is that I will tell you what I feel straight up. And, uh, you know, you may not like the answer. And, hell, Billy's had his fair share of times he did not like my answer. Um but, you know, I, I don't shy away from what I actually feel with you, and I'm not going to sit there and bullshit you and then go around and turn around and bury you behind your back. Like, that's, that's, not, that's not my style. I'll let you know. Um, and here's the other thing. I think there's a lot of wrestlers that um, you could do one little thing that they didn't like, and then you're dead to them, and, like, they're always going to bury you. You're nothing but trash to them. And that's not the case with me. Like, dude, like, there's people that have, like, really pissed me off that you know now we're very good buddies um and so i that's but that's to be expected that's with every part of the entertainment industry whether you're a comedian whether you're wrestler you know whatever Whatever. position it's like that in all industry and i haven't seen that side of things and i think that i mean i shouldn't have to see it as long as i'm like i mean doing what i just need to do like that's the big thing like do what you do what you came to do yeah so, but uh, no, like, like I said before, leave your comments if you want to know little things like that about wrestling or just, uh, just about be, like becoming a wrestler. Like the whole organization, I think. Like, there's so many possible jobs. So, like one day I looked at like jobs for the NFL. Did you know a water boy makes almost eighty grand a year? Nice. Be that water boy, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> I said I'll be I mean, that the water only boy. water boy I wouldn't want to be. I would not be want to be a water boy for Belichick. That's one. I was like, <laughs> no. Like he would critique you at like film game and shit like yeah you're squirting that shit way too wrong yeah i mean shit but no like Get yeah better. like leave those leave those types of questions if 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 that i guess spikes your uh i guess interest for like things like that because i think that that's where like i think a lot of people lack the knowledge of is like knowing the little intricate things about not just wrestling but every type of business in a whole that's not normal to them for sure so, um but. so Let's talk Leavenworth really quick. We're yeah. about an hour and a half in. Um, so These are always usually longer, but we still try to keep Correct. Them shorter, so uh, let's let's get Leavenworth in, and then uh I guess your big thing, thing with home. Leavenworth, though, like let's talk about like you guys first. It's the first city you guys opened up with, right? Yes. And you introduced what? A brand new title. A very brand new title. I was going to bring it tonight, uh, and I was rushing around with work and it's stuff, beautiful. and I forgot it. It is beautiful. I knew Helms would like it because it has an old school vibe to it. It is called the First City Championship, and we will crown our First City Champion 
in December. Yeah, so that's going to be, let me get the date real quick. Uh, so Leavenworth, December 14th. Correct. I think we're calling that one the Jingle Bell Brawl, and that is going to be there where we um, finally get our first city champion, and uh, I think that thing is just a just an absolute gorgeous title. And like um, we said before, it was a live event, so don't forget to go watch this. Correct. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you can check it live out on YouTube right now. Also, guys, at that event, we are doing the show is absolutely 100% free. We are trying to build our crowd in Leavenworth, and we feel letting y'all come see what we have to offer for absolutely free will help make you come check us out. So come join us. We're going to have a blast. We're going to crown our first ever first city champion, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. So, completely, it's fan appreciation night for Leavenworth. Um, so, free show um, should be, it's like normally eight matches, um, and it's going to be awesome. Um, bring the kids out. It's family friendly show, guys. And, um, you know, we can't wait to see you there. Hopefully, um, you know, not hopefully, I know, I will still be rocking this HCW Heartland Heavyweight Championship around my waist around that time. And, um, to beat up on one of your favorites right in time for Christmas. <laughs> so, anyway, but, guys, uh, no, it has been a pleasure. I like something big. Oh. Oh, he I was gonna say, yeah, he's getting, he's wrapping he's, it up. He's gone. <laughs> oh, I thought we were well, wrapping it up. One, oh. one second. He's going to wrap you up for it. Well, like, uh, I didn't know if you wanted to highlight any specific matches. We do know that Chance is still undefeated. Chance 100% is undefeated. Uh, Aaron kept his title. Correct. Uh, then uh, the t- uh, KWA Tag Team titles were also uh, up for grabs. Uh, With Only Friends and Chonkla Violence, where Chonkla Violence did come out victorious. And uh, you have one of the first participants in that uh, tournament for the First City Championship, correct? I do. So, Handgun Dan won a four-way dance to uh, get a first-round bye. Um, So, he advances to the next round of the tournament, which we will do the whole tournament in December or on December 14th to crown that First City Champion. And I do want to shout out Mindy. Like, you did an awesome job announcing, I think. I thought she did, too. She did fantastic First time job. doing it. Uh, I mean, like, let's not forget. This guy didn't tell me anything I was doing. I'm sure you got <laughs> way more knowledge than I did on the first dive, but you, you killed it. And uh, I did watch up until, uh, I think, right at the end of the Handgun Dan match and then left and then came back to the end of the uh, the final match, which was uh, one that you guys really wanted to put an ending to for uh, Kit Reaver and Paradox. And that match was brutal. Uh, they went everywhere. They went even through the tables. Bar. They went through <laughs> freaking, even in the bar. Grab the beer. They went through a TV. Uh, it, it was just crazy. Uh, and Kit Reaver was able to come out victorious. And let's not forget that uh, Kit Reaver, we have it all on camera. He tried to square things off with uh, old, what did, uh, what did our friends over at Team Saving Name tag his name? Tricky Dicky or Slicky, <laughs> slicky Dicky? <laughs> slicky Dicky. Um, he did pull one, uh, like he went over to, you know, shake his hand, apologize, try to uh, uh, get some good grace sense. And, you know, Dick Richards tried to come to me and say that he pushed him and hurt him. And then the video came out and I messaged Dick and I was like, what is this? And he was like, that video's false. Video evidence, Dicky. All right, Karen. Video evidence. Karen's all around. <laughs> I mean, you brought him up, but I mean, he's just uh, not the one that will uh, lie about you and behind That's your right. back. He'll try to lie to you in front of your face. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, to go check that out on live. It was awesome to listen to the commentary. You will get a different vibe. It's uh, very much. Uh, it's a lot like watching Pat McAfee and uh, Cole go back. At, is it, uh, Michael Cole. Michael Cole go nice. back and forth with the knowledge and then the the quick wit and it's kind of going back and forth. So. Awesome first live. I mean, there are always things to always get better at. So I think sure. it's just going to keep getting better. And I think the great time for that is not just going to be this weekend. It's also going to be at an Osage Rec Center show. I agree. But uh, first, I want to thank uh, Aaron for coming on. But I also want to thank listeners. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Aaron, do you have any last words? And uh, also, finish off with your uh, social medias and anything like that. I know you said them earlier, but... Yeah, absolutely. So you remember, uh, fans, you can follow me at, at the Prodigy Helms on all social media. And if you didn't know it by now, you should know it. I am and always will be red, white, and better than you. I'm your Heartland heavyweight champ for a reason. 
And come November 16th, I'm going to slap the piss out of Ray Leone and Drake Gallows, and I hope you're there to witness it. Come check us out here in Wichita. Come check us out in Leavenworth, and make sure that you're following HCW on all of our social media, HCW Live 23. Thank you guys for having me. It's been a pleasure. Um, and until next time, peace. Appreciate you, champ. Have a good one. And uh, let's not forget, you've been chopped. That's facts. So set, rip up and chop. And running roads in the world of pro wrestling, but who we will show from the top.